divorced or separated. This is per um, per Pew Research. This is, I want to say, where is this? Uh, this is as of 2021, I believe. So let's have a look here, shall we? All right, divorced or separated adults. Uh, religious composition of divorced or separated adults. There's lots and lots of data for this. So we can have a look here. Now people go, well, it's 2021, man, it's COVID. Mm. Christian and evangelical Protestant, which I believe is what uh, Ruslan would subscribe to, uh, it is 74%. Mainline Protestant uh, is 14. Historically Black Protestant is at 9. Catholic is at 19%. Okay? So we can look at these here. We can look at more. Mormons got it going, man. If you're Mormon, clearly being a Mormon, if you want to avoid divorce, <laughs> uh, Jehovah's Witness, 1%. Hey, man, they got something going, right? Of course, you have to remember. Um, let's look at demographics and population, okay? Most people present to be, or at least profess to be, according to uh, the Census Bureau, uh, Christians of some sort, evangelical Christians, okay? Non-Christian faiths, 5%. Jewish, 1%. Muslim, 1%. Buddhists, 1%. Hindu, man, less than 1%. You got to be Hindu if you want to keep it together, man. Perhaps they know the secret. Uh, other world religions, less than 1%. Other faiths, okay. Now, here's the real one. Unaffiliated religious nuns. That means they have no faith or they, maybe they're agnostic, maybe, whatever. Uh, so these are the ones who say, uh, I'm spiritual, but not religious. I don't have a particular religion, but I do believe in God, perhaps, whatever. Unaffiliated religious nuns is at 20%. And Christian as a total is at 74%. So if we look, even if we just break it down to evangelical Protestant versus unaffiliated, we're still looking at a difference of 8%. So Evangelical Protestants actually get divorced 8% more than unaffiliated religious nuns. Don't look at me, man. This is just, oh, well, we got, okay. So they, they break it down in here to among divorce separated adults of divorce. Okay. So they give it to you in different charts down here, but the salient point is this, and I will put these up if you would like to see them. This is a you, hell. You can just go find this. This is at pewresearch.org. It's religion, religious landscape study, marital status and divorced and separated again, drawn from the U S census bureau. So clearly that is a false statement that doesn't bear again. That does not hold up. It does not hold water, Ruslan, to say that evangelical Christianity. Now, of course, you could also, even if you uh, collected all that, it's still, you know, so, I mean, to in total, it's 74%. So clearly it's not, it's not a religious thing. And again, I'm not, I want you to be right. I really do. I want this to be the right way, but I can't, I got to report that. I got to report, I got to call it like I see it, man. So again, I, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds in, in religion here, but that's the, the facts are what the, the, the facts are. So that is a misstatement according to Pew Research and the U.S. Census Bureau as of 2020, I believe is when they're pulling this from, from the uh, U.S. Census data. So we got that. That's number one. Okay, you asked for it. Here's the next one. Uh, let me pull that one out and let's give you... Okay, that was pretty good. Let me, let me come back to that. Later. That's, the, that's, that's Pew Research. Uh, let's have a look at the other ones here. Um, well, we can talk about improved health, marriage and health and all that good stuff here. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, religious marriage paradox. Younger marriages, less divorce. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, this is from, okay, this is kind of, I hate to call this a kill shot, but this is the kill shot. Um, let's see. That's the, I, I'm, again, I'm not trying to shit on religion here. I'm just pointing out, here's, here's the way things work. Okay, this is, uh, because we're on this topic, I'll get to this one right now. Let's go to the IFS stuff. And that is here. And that is here. Where's my IFS? Mm, okay, here we go. Got it. All right, here we go. Got this one. Can you see this? We can. Good enough. All right. So this was uh, from the, uh, this is from IFS, by the way, is, um, uh, was it uh, something for Family Studies, International Family Studies, I think is what, it's, what it is. All right, uh, this is, uh, let's see, how old is this? Uh, 2021, so this is um, almost a year old. Uh, the new marriage for norm for Americans, men and women, is to marry around the age of 30. Got that? Okay, you guys ready to wait till 30 to have sex, young Christian men and women? 
Lolo Jones, you're still waiting. I'm almost there. Got to freeze my eggs because God hasn't provided. According to the U.S. Census, many young adults believe that marrying closer to the age of 30 reduces their risk of divorce. And indeed, there is research consistent with that belief. But we also have the evidence uh, suggesting that religious Americans are less likely to divorce, even as they are more likely to marry younger. This paradoxical pattern raises two questions worth, worth exploring. Is the way religious Americans form their marriages different than the way uh, marriages are formed by their more secular peers? Do and do religious marriages formed by 20-somethings face different divorce odds than marriages formed by secular Americans in the same age group? Well, let's have a look, okay? Most religious marriages, by the way, are formed just as um, just as Ruslan's was. Like, you know, you're 19, you meet the girl at church camp or something, right? All right, the rise of co uh, cohabitation and the age at marriage for U.S. women, okay? So you can look at this, and you can look at that from 1962. Hmm, what happened in 1965? Because it seems like the spike was right around 65 and really took off around 1968. Hmm, okay, this is the rise of cohabitation, not marriage. Got it? So you can see that spike right there. Can you guys see that? Yes, you guys can, I believe. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Okay, I, I, don't worry. I will get to Super Chats here in just a moment. Right after this. Let me, right after this episode. The answer to the last question is complicated by the role of cohabitation in contemporary family formation. Today, more than 70% of marriages are preceded by cohabitation. Hmm. As figure one indicates, increased cohabitation is both cause and consequence of the rise in the age of first marriage. But what most young adults do not understand or do not know is that cohabiting before marriage, especially with someone besides your future spouse, is also associated with an increased risk of divorce, as a recent Stanford study reports, and that's online library. Okay. One reason that religious marriages in America may be more stable is that religion reduces young adults' odds of cohabiting prior to marriage, even though it increases the likelihood of marrying at a relatively young age, which has its own difficulties. Accordingly, in the Institute for Family Studies research brief, we explore the relationship between religion, cohabitation, age at first or age at marriage, <clears throat> and Divorce by looking at the data from the National Survey of Family Growth, the NSFG. Okay. Last coffee. <clears throat> okay. Research religion and family. I'm not going to go through all of this. You guys can have a look at this right here if you want to. Research religion and family. To address the question <clears throat> addressed in this brief, we merged the data from the National Family Survey. Okay. So this is their research techniques. Does religion, let's see, does religion influence marriage and cohabitation? In the 1960s, about 5% of newlyweds cohabited before marriage. In 2010, it was more than 70%, an enormous increase. After incorporating the effects of control variables, figure two shows that the, a typical year of life, about 5% of non-religious women and, uh, between 18 and 49 who have not yet married or cohabited will begin a cohabiting union, unless your name is Lolo Jones. That figure is near 4% for women with a Christian upbringing, near to 3% for women with a non-Christian upbringing. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, as well as Jews, Muslims, Hindus, <clears throat> and others. <clears throat> and so Mormons, you're not Christian, and Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not officially Christian. Uh, and about 4% uh, of religious women on the whole. In other words, after controlling for a variety of background factors, women who had grow, uh, who grew up Religious are about 20% less were likely to begin cohabiting a cohabiting union in any given year than their non-religious peers. As a result, by upbringing, uh, as a result, uh, by age 35, uh, about 65% of women with non-religious upbringing had cohabited at least once versus 50% of women with a religion with a religious upbringing. Not only does religion reduce the odds that young adults cohabit, it also increases the odds that they marry directly or without cohabiting first. So, I pose it to you, Ruslan and Iron Dudes, Iron Disciples, Iron Men, Mighty Men of God. Is that correlation? 
between religious women and a lower incidence of divorce is or successful marriage, right? The 50%. Is that a result of religion? Is that a result even of marriage? Or is it a result of marrying earlier and having fewer partners as a result of that?